Don't bother me, I'm learning. What you're about to see is the revolution everybody's been talking about. The personal computer revolution that's sweeping the entire country. People of all ages are working with the latest technology. They're playing with it, doing business with it, and they're learning with it. Video games took the mystery out of computers. They're easy to learn to play, they test your reflexes, and they're a lot of fun. But once you learn to make the computer work for you, you can't wait to go a step further. From fun to challenge, from entertainment to education, from using a toy to using a tool that can stretch your imagination and expand your limits. It's not just the basics like spelling and math. It's not just storing and retrieving information. It's the opening of a new door to a whole new world of knowledge. You can use the computer to provide you with a much broader range of information. You can experiment, invent, create, and simulate. Take whatever it is that interests you most and go after it. You'll find the answers to your questions and a whole new set of questions to ask. Let's go meet some people in California who are already using computers. In the Menlo Park community, a group of people are making a major concerted effort to give all its residents a chance to try the computer. The group took equipment and instructors to visit and teach at the library and boys club, as well as the senior citizen center. They even put up a computer exhibit at the street fair. The whole project started with an idea called Computer Town, USA. It began here as the brainchild of Bob Albrecht and Ramon Zamora, who is now project director. We started Computer Town with computers and kids here in the Menlo Park Public Library. Our goal in Computer Town was to give everybody in the town of Menlo Park, which is a town of 27,000 people, a chance to use a computer. It's still loading. This project started with us trying out the project in pizza parlors and in bookstores and in the school situations. And we used our own equipment and, and we carried it around to various places. And we discovered that the library is the, is, the, is the best setting for what we're doing and what we're trying to do within Computer Town USA. And the library provides a very natural setting. This is open, you know, eight or nine hours a day. And so it's a free access uh, location, and people can just come in and use computers like they would a, a card catalog or a book. So we're, we're providing an alternative place for people to get their hands on a microcomputer and to learn about the technology. We don't have a hammer. We don't need a simple one for it. Very early on in the process, we ended up with a lot of children uh, learning how to use the machine and teaching other children how to use the machine. We told the kids one thing they couldn't do when they came in the library was uh, they could not ask the librarian any questions, that the librarians did not know anything about the machines, that they had to ask another kid. What naturally evolved after we tried it out a little bit was uh, uh, the process of validating children. We gave them a button, and this and their library card would let them get into the library and use the machines anytime.
Herbert Hoover Boys Club has 600 members, both boys and girls, from East Palo Alto and Menlo Park, a minority target area. The club offers all kinds of sports and activities, including auto mechanics and home economics. And since Computertown USA made them available, the club also has computers, which they keep in their learning center. Our learning center is really a library, but we found that uh, it's more attractive to youngsters if uh, we dub it our learning center and try to uh, sneak a little learning in. So even our usage of the uh, software, for an example, a prerequisite for playing the games that are available is that they use the educational tapes and they kind of have to suffer through that, the kids say we have to go through this before we get to what we really want. Computer Town USA is a group that uh, made this available to us and the first time that uh, the computers were made available to our membership, the kids are just swarming all over the place, and it's just phenomenal. The interest is just great. It is an eye-opening experience for parents, and it really dispels some myths of it that, uh, uh, you know, it's only for the uh, Professor Peabody types and that sort of thing. Hard, huh? You on your own, Jason. Whoa. Thank you. How much? I want to show you. I want to show you. We think that uh, the computer uh, town exposure is very important, and we hope to continue that sort of relationship. It isn't just the boys and girls who are learning. At the Little House Senior Citizen Center in Menlo Park, you can learn to paint, sew and sculpt or try your hand at the computer. Some people are initially scared to death of computers. Matt Lehman overcame his fear. I was terrified of computers when I first started to fool with them. And when I came over here to do some volunteer work at the little house, it certainly occurred to me that here's a whole group of people they are in the same position I was that are terrified of these monsters, that all they do is mess your bills up. And that maybe if they knew a little bit more about them, that they would uh, feel a little more comfortable with it. I have been using mine now for so many things at home, I don't see how anybody gets along without one. All the letters I type are on that because I make terrible mistakes. It's very easy to correct when you have a word processing program. Almost all of my uh, financial information is kept on a computer now. Everything from magazine renewal lists to uh, recipes, I mean, there's so many things that can be done, I think it's going to be an individual thing. Alabama. 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 Go. <laughs> We're going to get that right. Go. Push the button. That's oblique enough that it just might be. It's wrong. Jackson. Jackson. Thank you. Maine. This ought to be a dinger. I think uh, we saw well, they got interested. And they'll get interested in games, and from games to uh, more practical use, just like children. And they'll learn like children. So uh, this will make them a little more familiar with the thing. Once you know a, a device, it's no longer a monster.
Deer Town is basically an idea, and uh, it's not a place or a thing or any particular group of people. It's an idea of how you can provide technology to a large number of people in a, uh, a, a public setting. Ramon estimates that in two years, over 12,000 people in the Menlo Park area have played with, worked with, or learned with a computer. You don't have to be a genius, a brain, or a mathematician. You just have to be curious. For some people, the computer has completely changed the way they live and how and where they work. If you've ever thought about working for yourself, if you've ever said, I'm tired of the rat race, the commute, and the corporate politics, meet Terry Howard, who's been a stockbroker for 20 years. He worked in a big office downtown and commuted in and out of the city for 18 of those years. Terry now works out of his house using a personal computer, and it makes all the difference in the world. Three years ago, I made the decision and bought the computer. Uh, once I had the computer and had it working, I realized, uh, gee, you know, now I don't need a secretary. Now I don't need all these other things, and I can adapt the computer to do other things for me. So I decided, uh, and I had the space here at home, which uh, made it possible. So I thought I'd give it a try for three months or six months and see how it worked, and it worked. It's been, uh, you know, it's a very, a very comfortable lifestyle. Now I, I get up uh, 45 minutes later than I used to, and uh, instead of spending all my time putting on a coat and tie, I go out and I do some exercise, and I usually run three miles every morning, and, and uh, I'm you know here at work by 7.30 or 8, uh, feeling a lot better than I did when I was working in the city. When you think of the expense and the frustration involved in, in driving 20 miles one way to work each day, Wow, you know, how did I ever put up with this for 18 years? You don't seem to notice it while you're doing it. Really, you know, from the time I get up in the morning till I get down here, it's just a 10 or 15 second walk. And I mean, I've got more time to devote to work and, and more energy. I feel better physically and uh, psychologically better than I, than I did 20 years ago. My wife uh, is my assistant. Uh, she, she's on the payroll, so to speak. and pay her a pretty good salary and she's very happy with that and uh, the kids enjoy having us all together working I'm sure I see a lot more of my children than I ever did before Terry's family likes having him work at home but what about his clients has it presented any problems to them or changed their relationship in any way well in our business 99% uh, of the contact is over the telephone and so the, from their standpoint, there's really not any difference at all. Uh, I mean, I may be, you know, uh, sitting here on a sweltering day in a t-shirt and a pair of shorts, and they don't know that, you know. They probably still think of me as having a coat and tie and looking like a stockbroker, but that's the nice thing about the telephone. <laughs> what they don't know doesn't hurt me. <laughs> Work is still work. I mean, you have to earn a living, and by definition, work is not play. So if you have to work, this is about as good a work environment as I can imagine. These children are a little too young to have their own business, but it may be just a matter of time. What's her name? Anita. Anita. Mm -hmm. She never gets in the way. <laughs> but she always loses her blouse. Not always. No, just one day today. Okay. Helena and Maria are learning to draw with a graphics plotter. Their first subject is Anita. There's a head. Okay. <laughs> At this age, using the computer is no more complicated than playing with a doll. She has a very pretty dress. <laughs> The computer is giving these young children a whole new way to learn, a means of communication never dreamed of until now.
Here in the Santa Barbara Hills, there's a very special summer camp, a computer camp. Kids here from all over the country who come for the usual camp activities. There's plenty of sailing, swimming, tennis, and horseback riding. But without exception, everybody's favorite sport is computer programming. Programming is definitely an indoor sport. Computers are housed in trailers, which must be kept dust-free and cool. So, as an extra added bonus, you learn to program barefoot. Camp director Gary White explains what it's like to run a computer camp. These kids are so eager, they're so willing, they're so bright, they're so enthusiastic. It's uh, Part of it just runs itself. I mean, you put the kids on the computers and in some ways, nature just takes its course. The kids get in here and boom, they're right on the computer and they want to do everything and they type and they try things. Uh, you give them new technology and they're on it immediately. They've got it figured out and they're working with it right away. They're learning to think logically. They're learning to explore. When it comes right down to it, a 10-year-old camper here helps to teach. And it's not unusual to have them teaching a 15 or a 16-year-old camper because you never know who's going to get the concepts first, who's going to be, uh, who's going to be the, the sharpest, the quickest to catch on to something, and they love being able to share it. It's better than a regular camp? Uh, yeah. 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 Some things never change. Computers or no computers, kids will be kids. David and Annie Fox pioneered another way to learn to use computers. In 1977, they founded the Marin Computer Center north of San Francisco. It's a public access center where anyone can come in and use the computers. Okay, take as much time as you need to have a really good story. Some people who are working on the um, Atari it's a place where people could come in and play with computers in a real friendly, low-key environment. We essentially rent computer time by the hour for game playing and educational use, and we teach programming to kids and adults. The underall um, purpose of everything that we do here is to give a child an experience of power over what he formerly thought was an extremely powerful machine. Putting the child in the driver's seat making him aware of the computer's capabilities as well as limitations, gives him a feeling that, hey, you know, I'm eight years old and I can tell this machine what to do. I think that they're a great motivator because to be a programmer, you have to be a teacher. And in order for a child to take on the role of a teacher, the child has to really know his material really well. And it kind of puts him on the other side instead of always receiving the information, He's now inputting information into a computer, and the computer becomes a student. That feeling of confidence, if you can have a feeling of power over a computer, then, then the child feels there's nothing that he cannot do. There are people in their um, late 30s and 40s and older who uh, feel the computers have just passed them by. And uh, that's difficult because a lot of them are now dealing with them on a professional level because the computers are everywhere. I've learned that anybody can learn anything. And I use myself as an example because I was scared to death of computers. I was not good in math, and I hated technology, per se. And for me to be a proponent of this stuff makes me realize that really anybody can learn on whatever level they want to get into. And it's fun. I've learned computers are fun. As you can see, the personal computer is by no means limited to video games. It can be used as a toy or as a tool. A tool that can draw, 
and then animate the drawing. It's a new way to teach children their ABCs. It can run a business. And it can help people communicate for the first time in their lives. But we cannot afford to let noisy, aggressive, shoot them out of the sky games threaten the positive potential of the computer. The future of software does not lie in the darkness of the video arcade. It lies in the imagination, ready to follow in any direction the human mind chooses to go. The computer is meant for the curious, the wonderers, the explorers, for people who know there is more than one way to do it, and who are ready to take that step from fun to challenge, from entertainment to education. With the computer, we now have in our hands a whole new way to learn, and it's no longer a matter of will you have one. It's a question of what you will use yours for. I'm learning now. Don't bother me. I'm learning how. 